Thanks again for joining me tonight. Uh, as we move through this webinar, I do have the chat window open. So if you have any questions, pop them in there, or um, you're also welcome to unmute yourself and just jump in at any time if you have any questions. So let's dive in. I've got some content. I got a lot of demos and hopefully everything loads like it's supposed to. Oh, I should also note we've had our, our local internet providers been going in and out today. So I've got a backup tablet set up in case this goes out. I've got a mobile connection I can always uh, check back in on. Okay. So by way of explaining what scenarios are, and so you all know what to expect tonight, I've got a couple of demos I just wanted to start off with. I've been scouring here and near and everywhere for scenarios to show you all. So let's go ahead and start by looking at a couple. This one is called Working with Challenging Members. Um, this is a nice little scenario that shows off some interpersonal skills. It's like, a, it's like you have a board of people and you've got one person on there that's being kind of a, kind of a pain for the other people. So the idea is you're, you're gonna learn how to manage difficult situations with members of your club or your board. Uh, so it starts off, it tells you exactly who you are, what to expect from this scenario. It asks you to enter your name in and it gives you a little bit of instructions here throughout the module click the whatever that icon is for more information. This is based in storyline, by the way, if you're not familiar. Um, I'm not going to linger too long in all the text content. It's a it's a little bit of reading, um, but basically this is Jeremy and Jeremy is the problem. He's causing problems and other board members or club members don't know how to deal with him. So I kind of like that it's trying to be realistic right. Um, I've got uh, photographs of people in this scenario. It's um, so far it seems pretty true to life. It's using my own name uh, throughout the scenario, which makes it a little bit more personalized as if I am also a member of said club. Um, I've got a, another member calling me and asking me for advice, what we should do. What I like about this scenario is that um, it is a true branching scenario and there are multiple pathways to go through this scenario. So this is not just, you know, you choose one thing and it's a wrong answer and it makes you re-choose over and over until you get the correct answer. Um, so let's go ahead and let's just choose something I think is a wrong answer here. I select it, it automatically advances and we've got another choice here. Let's move on talking to Jeremy. I decided to meet with him after a board meeting. How do I approach him? And we move on through a variety of situations. And again, I really like this because there's multiple choices at every turn and I never hit a dead end. There's a lot of ways to get through. I also like that there are tips scattered throughout this scenario where it's giving me some ideas on how to uh, basically navigate successfully because the idea is that this is supposed to be a learning experience. So it continues on. I'll go ahead and leave it at that. Um, I just realized I forgot to share the link to the handout. I do have uh, links to all the scenarios that I'm showing today. So let me copy that and then pop that back into the chat. So I'm pasting the handout link into the chat there. Uh, you can check that out and get links to all these scenarios. You can try them further on. So that was my, my first demo. It's a working with challenging members scenario where there's someone that's causing issues in a club and you are asked to help remedy the problem, to navigate all these personalities successfully to a, a good resolution. I, again, I really like in that scenario, there's not just one right answer answer as you move through just like in real life you know you can kind of mess up with somebody make something that isn't the best choice but you can still kind of fumble your way there eventually so that's a really good true to life scenario another one here is a, a much more detailed scenario this is not a branching scenario this is all about patient management you may have seen this one before it's kind of a commonly demonstrated one as far as scenarios go in this one, you are, I'll kind of skip all of this, uh, basically you're like a doctor and you're presented with three patients, you interview them, you learn about their history, and you come to a diagnosis and a treatment. And it tells you right up front how you are assessed as you move through this scenario, rather than making like the exact right choice or the exact wrong choice, there's a lot of gray area and you're actually going to be measured based on your time and budget 
and your patient management score. So this always lives in the bottom left-hand corner and it measures how you do as you go throughout the scenario. This is just a, a, a demo demo that they built. So it's a prototype, it's not fully fleshed out, but it gives you a really good idea of what a, a really complex demo looks like. So case number one here is Ms. Kaminsky. Um, got her gender, got her age. We can continue on. It gives you her history. You can choose the questions that you want to ask her. Maybe I think those two are great. You can ask her all the questions. It does take more time for you to ask all of those questions. So that is something that will ding your score. Because again, it's about more than just a successful diagnosis. You have to be timely in your successful diagnosis. You can view responses to her to the questions we're asking, ask follow-up questions. Um, and once you view those, you can continue on. Now we come to a little moment where we do a physical examination <laughs> in quotation marks there. It's a simulated examination. We can look closely at her face. Uh, it's got larger illustrations of what's going on. It's got some descriptions, really thorough descriptions. And once you're satisfied, you can go ahead and move on. And at any point, you can also jump back and forth here as well, which is a really nice touch, which again is kind of like a, a true to life um, uh, situation. Okay, now we've got the report. Uh, we're looking at her, her history, her present illness. So we can see her past medical history. We can see her family history. We can review all her you know, um, systems here. We got notes about her physical examination. So now we're asked to continue on and to make a diagnosis. And there's only three options here. There is a correct answer in this one because oftentimes with people, there's one thing that's wrong <laughs> and you have to be able to diagnose that so you can uh, succinctly treat it. So let's go ahead and say that she has a spreading hematoma. And we made the diagnosis, it moves us right along to treatment. What would be our next steps? Let's give this a shot. Incorrect diagnosis. All right, so unlike the other scenario, which is interpersonal skills, where there's not necessarily just one right answer, in this scenario, there is a right answer. But again, we're also looking at our score here in the bottom left for time and budget management and for patient care management. So I think you can see this is probably starting to go down a little bit. All right, so it gives me some negative feedback and it gives me some positive feedback. One important feature of scenarios is that there are there is really constructive feedback and or consequences, again, true to real life, so that you learn from this experience. So let's go ahead and just dive back into the PowerPoint. Okay. So as I was preparing for this presentation, I found that we have a really wonderful book available at Pollock Library. If you are a current student, then you have access because this is an ebook and the link to this is in the um, handout as well. I'm pasting the handout link into the chat. Again, I'll paste it one, in one more time at the end of the presentation as well. Um, the patient scenario is not done in storyline. I don't know what it's done in. I couldn't figure it out. I don't think it's storyline. I it's definitely not storyline and it's not captivate. I don't know what they used, something else. It could have been web coding, I have no idea. Um, anyways, okay, so this book is wonderful and I'm using this book to provide some of the definitions and details on how to build a good scenario. So definitely check that out. The link to that again is in the handout. Okay, so as an instructional designer, you're always looking to create an effective learning experience our default as educators is often to create an instructive experience. And the idea is you present some new information and then you say, now let's practice with it. Then we'll assess what you know. So here's a definition. Let's see if you have absorbed that well enough and then we'll test you to make sure you did absorb it well enough. Uh, in contrast, a scenario is an inductive learning experience. The idea is that you give someone a problem and you basically just like let them figure it out. You might provide resources and some information for them to choose from to figure it out, but you give them a problem. You're not just like spoon feeding them something, you're giving them a problem. As you're probably imagining right here, it's really important in a scenario to make sure that your learner is prepared to deal with that problem beyond just giving a problem and some information. Generally, they need to come to the table with some existing knowledge so that scenario can build on what they already know and they can draw upon what they already know. So they're not just like completely overwhelmed from the start. As a quick uh, illustration of the difference between these two uh, 
approaches for instruction. Um, instructive would be something like, here's an apple. Now let's talk about the characteristics of an apple, thinking about like, you know, maybe a, a kindergarten class or first grade class or something. Whereas inductive would be like, what is this? What are its characteristics? But hey, we've got this uh, book here for you to help. Maybe there's some interactive resources to help. And you know, let's, let's give it an hour, let's give it a day. And I expect you to come back to class with a full presentation on what this is, what the characteristics are. So you're handing someone a problem. It's a big simplification, but you get the idea between uh, instructive and inductive. Scenarios, of course, are very inductive. They are known by many names in instructional design. You've probably already found that there are a lot of ways to refer to the same thing. Uh, so you may also know scenarios as problem-based learning, whole task learning, case-based learning, immersive learning. I don't know, maybe you know some, some other ones, uh, but there's a lot of ways to refer to this. Scenario, I think is a nice, simple, concise term. It's a great way to refer to this. It's, it's not case studies necessarily. A scenario is a guided situation. So it's not gonna be like you're just handing a case study and asked to deal with it. It's gonna be more of a guided scenario than a, a case study if you're thinking about case studies. Okay. So, we already looked at a couple of demos of scenarios and I've definitely got a lot more for you. Yeah, uh, Tyler, simulation is, um, is also a, a good term for a scenario as well. If you handed someone a simulation and they're asking them to uh, figure it out, saying that you handed them some sort of problem in the simulation, they, they have to figure it out, that'd be a good learning experience. Lucy, I see you've got your hand raised. Did you wanna jump in? Okay, Lucy, if you uh, get the, yourself unmuted and you want to jump in and, and chat, go ahead and uh, do that whenever you're ready. Okay, uh, so we already looked at a couple of demos. The first one we looked at was an interpersonal communication scenario. You've got a problematic board member and you are asked to resolve the situation with them. Another good example would be like a car mechanic. You've already got the basics. You understand how cars work. You know how to do a lot of repairs and you're presented a scenario in which you need to identify and repair a problem. That would probably be similar to the doctor one and that you need to keep in um, a certain amount of time maybe and a certain budget probably. So you're not just like using all the parts and throwing all the parts in the car to see if it works. You've got budgets for both things. So that might be kind of a more gray area scenario where there's not just one right answer answer, but there's different ways to approach it and you're judged based on how well you do with um, the resources at hand. Of course, we just looked at the doctor scenario, diagnose and treat a patient. Um, of course, medical scenarios are a wonderful thing to be able to have on hand for medical education these days, because if you misdiagnose a, a not real person, a person that's online, that's harmless. You haven't caused harm to any real person. So that's a really nice way to let doctors practice without new doctors practice without harming anybody. Um, other examples, you might have someone grapple with ethics, you know, the philosophy of whether to disclose medical information. Um, scenarios can also not have one resolution. For example, if you were to do a wedding planning scenario where you're kind of teaching someone to be a wedding planner, you might just use a scenario to kind of, um, get them experienced in what trade-offs are. So for instance, if someone has a particular budget and they've got particular desires to have at their wedding, you usually don't have enough budget for all of the nice things. So the wedding planner might have to work with that simulated couple to figure out what the trade-offs would be for a successful wedding that would make them happy. So scenarios often have kind of one, one ending, but they don't have to. It can be trade-offs, there can be multiple endings, uh, there can be just like a choose your own adventure book. If you used to read those, there can be a lot of different ways to get to the end though. Actually in choose your own adventure books, I think I always ended up dead at the end and never actually found the, the happy ending. Hopefully a scenario is such a good guide experience that you learn along the way and end up someplace really positive. All right, so here's a couple of um, definitions. A scenario is a pre-planned and guided inductive learning environment. I think the keywords here are pre-planned and guided. We're not just like throwing you out into a swimming pool and saying, you're gonna learn how to swim because you know, here's the environment for it. Um, we're giving someone a situation where we 
think they have a good idea of being successful and making it through based on their existing knowledge and based on the resources at hand. We're not going to let them flail. Scenarios should feature a um, work realistic assignment or challenge. This definition did come from that scenario based e learning book, which is more base, uh, focused on workforce training. But it, you can always replace the word work with life realistic, um, task realistic. Basically, it's got to be something that's true to life that you're actually going to, the learner is actually likely to experience because otherwise it's not really a good use of their time if they're practicing something that isn't true to life. A scenario, again, is a guided experience that responds to reflect learners' choices. There should be feedback and there should be consequences depending on what the scenario is, just like real life. Um, and rather than being more corrective, we're not looking to correct their choices so much like positive and negative feedback. We're looking to give them guided feedback and also present them with consequences. And that's where the learning happens. The learning can happen from consequences. Learning can happen from tips along the way, like in the interpersonal uh, club member demo. We're not looking to punish them really for wrong choices unless it's like, you know, a doctor or something and they killed somebody in a simulation. The idea is this is still a learning experience we want it to be successful. And we do that by offering a lot of choices, good guidance and kind of supporting the learner along the way. Again, it is pre-planned uh, pre and guided. Okay, so a couple of examples I already looked at um, are big, big scenarios. We can call them big S scenarios where the entire learning experience is a scenario. And that's what that scenario-based e-learning book really focuses on is big scenarios that are big learning experiences. Within your more instructive e-learnings, you could still use mini scenarios to uh, motivate learners, maybe as like a hook at the beginning of scenario. You could use them for small assessments, but overall in this presentation today, we are gonna talk more about, you know, like big S, like big scenario experiences. That said, though, scenarios can be scaffolded. What I mean by that is maybe if someone is new-ish to a topic, um, they have a scenario that's um, where they're more supported, where they have limited choices, and then scenarios could actually build on one another, and you can take the supports away slowly so that over time they're given more and more choices, maybe bigger consequences, and they're learning along the way. Just like with any new job um, where you're actually supported in your training and learning on the job, you might watch someone do a task, you might do part of the task, and then only after you do a lot of practice that's guided or supervised, then you do it on your own. So there's a scaffolding that can happen along the way. Um, above all, Scenarios, when you're using like big S scenarios, scenarios can be used to accelerate expertise. Again, the idea is that the learner should come with some sort of existing knowledge, like a car mechanic isn't going to be thrown into a car mechanic scenario where they have to diagnose a problem unless they already know a lot about cars, right? Otherwise, you're just setting them up for failure. But what can be really nice is like with car mechanics or with doctors, um, they could be presented with situations you're not gonna experience every day. Um, you can have them sit and do things on the computer that are going to accelerate their expertise by giving them a lot more practice, exposure to novel scenarios. Um, interpersonal scenarios can be used to really, really practice the interpersonal stuff without having to get into the messy interpersonal stuff in real life. But again, if you're going to use this to accelerate expertise, they should already have some experience in the topic and it shouldn't be brand new to them. So all that is to say, scenarios aren't necessarily going to have one correct answer. Again, there could be multiple endings. There could be multiple pathways through, just like real life. One bad decision doesn't usually sink whatever project you're working on. You can often correct, write the ship and find a different way through. And scenarios could also be used to illustrate trade-offs and gray areas where maybe there's no resolution at all and you just kind of come out to a resolution that is fine for whatever the situation is. Okay. So question in the chat, what do you think about scenarios with game over situations? Is that too scary and could discourage learners or could that be effective for instruction? Well, it kind of depends. If you have a sudden conclusion where maybe the learner has had to make like five or six decisions and then they make a wrong decision according to the, the scenario designer 
and they have a, a game over. Like, that's the end. You're done. You're going back to the beginning if you want to start again. It can be pretty frustrating for that learner to make it far in and then not have a chance to rectify uh, whatever decisions they make. This is um, this is a design choice, but generally, it's better if you don't have just like a sudden, like, oh, that's it. You're done. It's better a better learning experience if there are multiple pathways and even possibly multiple endings depending on what the subject is so the answer is it kind of depends but do a lot of testing know your audience don't frustrate the learner if you can help it yeah try again options really good yeah david that's a good point you can have a preloaded um uh, option so the user can try again for maybe a decision back two decisions back give them a chance to you know save save their progress and get back in there yeah it's frustrating if they have to start all over again um we're always really interested yeah <laughs> we're always really interested in learner motivation and yes it can be really unmotivating if someone like crashes and burns and they have to start all the way over if they aren't feeling good about the learning scenario it sounds a little cheesy. They need to feel, you know, invested in it in a way that's positive so that we're not discouraging them from being successful in a scenario. And what do you really learn if you if you suddenly crash and burn? Is it a real life um, consequence or is it something that's going to be really frustrating? Yeah, user control is really important, especially if you have um, adult adult learners. All right, I'm messing with my thing here. Okay. Any other comments questions this makes sense so far yeah i have a question yep. this is donna mm -hmm. um and you might be going into this but what does it look like to engage SMEs, uh, subject matter experts oh. in creating these multiple branchings or endings? good question i do not go into that in this hour because we have less than an hour mm. So are you talking about like the beginning of the design process or like as you are working on the scenario and you're looking to get SME feedback? At what point in the process do you are you thinking about? Well, I guess, I, I mean, especially with some of the specialized um, ones like medical mm. trainings and stuff. I mean, it, I assume you need to, you know, incorporate the SMEs in, in the creating of those from the beginning. Right. So if you're choosing to do a scenario, I, you've got some sort of buy-in, I would assume, from your stakeholders, and it's probably a situation where there already is some sort of like scenario practice in place, but maybe in real life, like maybe in the medical situation, you could be adapting case studies, and this means would be giving you the case studies and maybe working out how you'd convert those to a scenario. I don't have a real succinct answer then. Scenarios can be a little bit tricky to understand, but what you would do is you would write it all out in advance. You would probably introduce the concept. This is probably where um, rapid prototyping really comes into play too, using the SAM method versus the ADDIE method, or maybe just doing a little bit of design work up front where you write a story first, and then you check with the SMEs to see if it's realistic, what resources they would provide, maybe kind of what kind of scaffolding. It would definitely be a conversation. You'd have to have buy-in from the SMEs, I think. Okay, thank you. That, that's helpful. I've got a question, Lindsay. Sure. This is Teresa. Um, hey, Teresa. I I'm just not real clear, um, I guess, when you would use a scenario. And I'm wondering if, um, if it ever serves a purpose of, a, um, of an assessment, like maybe even on the front end to determine what trainees needed afterwards, or would it be ever an assessment on the back end after some training has been given? Yeah, it could be an assessment on the back end. If you're using it as something like I don't know if you'd use the scenario so much at the front end. If anyone has a different experience, um, let me know. If you're trying to assess where someone needs to enter a learning, it'd probably be something more like adaptive learning where it's more of a quiz than a scenario because you'd be looking for something really specific, like what level to um, uh, place them at. As far as putting it at the end of a learning, I, I think you could use it as an assessment if they are able to navigate it successfully, then that would maybe show that they've, um, uh, you know, got the knowledge and the skills that they need. But I think there'd have to be a lot of like front loading of training as well. That's another experience, uh, another situation where you want to make sure that they're going to be successful there, but it's probably going to be a lot of like front training to make sure that scenario is a, a really authentic assessment for the end. Mm -hmm. It's probably better used 
as a learning tool rather than an assessment, but I could see it being used as like a capstone for a training or something. Okay. That makes sense. So it's not necessarily just for training, but most often it's more for training than assessments. Yes. I'd say, yeah, more of a learning experience and assessment, you know, is part of learning, but if you're, if kind of, if, if, you're, if, you're, if it's more like an exit ticket sort of situation where you want to see if someone's reached the level where they need to be, it's probably not the most precise instrument, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Um, there probably are other assessment tools that would be really more efficient and effective in measuring if someone's really made it. But as a learning tool, it'd, it'd be really effective. All right. Thank you. I saw that um, Alex commented on the CSU sexual harassment training. Actually, last time I did it, I um, did some screen recordings of the parts that I liked, and then I think I lost the recordings. I wanted to use it as a teaching tool because they, they did a really good job with the sexual harassment training. It was a lot of scenarios, short videos. I did videos. it too. Lindsay, I have it. <laughs> I think I did a stream recording of it. I might still have it. <laughs> like just like good e-learning developers, we, we record the things that we're really into because you can't access it again or maybe you don't want to because you have to complete the whole thing again. Yeah, it was really well done. It was really well done. It's, I don't know, annoying that we have to do that every year, but it was well done. All right, let's scoot right along. Okay, so let's talk about formats and navigation. Again, I pulled these from the scenario-based e-learning book. It is more focused on workface, workforce training, but I think she has a really good outline of where scenarios are really helpful. And again, instructional design tends to be a more corporate leaning industry. Um, it's used a lot in, um, training people in their jobs and in tasks that are based in real life. So in any case, um, so Clark in her book identifies eight learning domains where she thinks scenarios are really effective. Uh, the first one, of course, is interpersonal skills, um, maybe doing customer service sales, uh, resolving issues among members of a board, um, compliance, Policies and procedures. Compliance training is pretty boring. <laughs> I mean, like CSU does a sexual harassment training every year. That's that's a compliance training. It's it could be really really dry, and it used to be more more dry and dull. But they they made it more interesting by including a lot of mini scenarios along the way, and that's more effective because it's more true to life, and it helps you be able to identify these things were they to happen in real life, and it helps you make the appropriate decisions if you do experience these situations or if you're advising someone on these situations. Oh, Marie um, shared the, the link to the, the training. That's awesome. Thanks. Um, diagnosis and repair, of course. Um, again, car mechanics, health and medical. These are good uh, subjects in which you would use a scenario. This one's interesting. Research, analysis, and rationale. So if you were to use a scenario for, for this kind of topic, think like um, bank loan analysis. There's a lot of factors that go into a bank loan. Um, you're looking at not just someone's credit score, you're looking at their job, you're looking at their assets, there's a lot of different things to look at, and there's not necessarily one correct answer, it's a judgment call. So a scenario can be a really good tool if you are trying to teach someone to make more effective judgments, or at least teach them about the trade-offs along the way as they make a judgment. Oh, and that brings us to trade-offs. Um, so maybe like project planning or ethical decisions, that's a domain in which you might use scenarios. Uh, operational decisions and actions. This one's more like um, if you're working in like a factory and you're controlling production, you have to kind of think about how one decision at one point in the process affects everything else in the process. Uh, another subject for this one might be aircraft navigation. Again, you've got all those, those dials around you and levers and all sorts of things. Um, and that's a really good use of a scenario because if you throw in someone into a cockpit, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty uh, deadly situation if they don't know what they're doing. A scenario is a really good way, again, to accelerate their expertise once they know a little bit about what they're doing. Uh, design, design scenario, uh, you could design a website, conduct a needs assessment, do a project plan or team coordination. Uh, this one was interesting. The example given for it is um, deploy resources to respond to a disaster situation. So just like um, we are underprepared for a pandemic in the United States, if only they'd worked on a lot more scenarios and had funding for people to respond to if, if the situation occurred where we had a pandemic. Um, you know, you can have infrequent natural disasters and other sorts of situations where you're not gonna be able to get that real life uh, expertise or maybe you don't want to throw someone into that kind of situation. And you could have someone work through scenarios in advance so they're ready should something actually happen and they need to use their knowledge. Okay. 
so that's sort of like the domains of um learning situations where they might be appropriate now here's the more practical part of this presentation what do these actually look like were you to build them out for any of these domains or subjects so basically there's only four formats branch scenario we've already talked about those you're probably at least somewhat familiar with those already menu driven that's where you have like say you're doing like the bank loan analysis scenario you're probably going to have a lot of tabs or buttons where you can pull up information about somebody um that patient diagnosis uh scenario that was a little bit menu driven that you have a lot of these options to choose from you can go back and forth as you make your decision you can do a full screen active object a good example of this is the car mechanic situation. You've got kind of like a, a simulated car, you have a simulated garage, you've got all your tools at hand, and you can interact with all those things in your simulated garage. It's not like VR, it's just on screen, but you can be active with all of those elements that are present on screen. So it's not just like a, a guided menu, it's as close as you can get to real life without actually being in real life. And a virtual world would be the last one. This would be more like a like a video game where you can interact completely with the environment and other people in the environment. So you could do like a sales role play, again, emergency responses to natural disasters, that sort of thing. Uh, menu driven could be, I see the, the question in the chat, menu driven could be kind of like a cheat sheet, but it might just be information related to the case at hand. So I kind of think like, Ooh, well, I should have pulled up a Carmen San Diego uh, scenario in here. I played so much Carmen San Diego when I was a kid. I love that game, um, but it was more. <laughs> but I think I think that'd be more like a menu a menu driven. It's not necessarily a cheat sheet. It's just that you have different options, maybe of tools to refer to, maybe different calculators, and also information to pull from. So it could be that you have cheat sheets in there as well, or maybe it's um a highly scaffolded scenario where you have reference guides and sheets to refer to, but it doesn't have to be necessarily. <laughs> I miss those old computer games too. Okay, so were you using StoryLearner Captivate, since our, that's our focus in this program, we use StoryLearner Captivate, and they're the easiest e-learning softwares to use in, in my book. Um, a branch scenario, if you want to build one of those out, if you're building a scenario, that is by far the easiest. It's just you, you map it out, you build it out, boom, done. Menu driven is doable. I've got um, an example. I think I have an example, yeah, of a menu driven one. Doable. You just have to have, um, you know, be clever with your design and with your visual design, especially so your screen isn't too cluttered. Full screen active object, it's possible. You'd have to have a lot of graphic design or have a lot of, um, have a graphic designer on hand or a whole world full of um, objects that are already built out for you to be able to interact with, with for the learner. Um, virtual world, probably not going to happen to storyline or captivate the best you can do is more like you know clicking on things in a in a 3d kind of world you would have to use more powerful software like the unreal engine or again that kind of like video game software to be able to build out that sort of thing so branch scenarios i think you see the most when you look for demos of scenarios just because they are the easiest to build the cheapest to build the further more complicated you go the more dramatic your budget and the, the hours involved um become. Okay. So I've actually got a whole bunch of scenarios to quickly demo for you. Um, I know we looked at a branching scenario already. That was the interpersonal one with the club members. So I'll skip the first one, but I can, uh, maybe I'll come back to it. Um, all of these are linked in the handout. I'll pop that again, just because I still have it on my my clipboard. Links to all of these are in my handout for you, but I want to show you some other examples. Okay, so I got one here on teaching presence. This is an example of a, this actually isn't really a branching scenario. This is an example of a scenario that's kind of used more, used as an assessment a mini assessment within a learning experience, kind of as like a knowledge check. So this is only actually one slide out of a much, much larger project. There's a comma here because it, it actually asks for your name at the beginning, but it's just one side of our project. In this case, scenarios are being used as a knowledge check. This larger learning experience is about teaching presence in online courses. Um, it's all about 
not just delivering good content to your learners and, you know, grading their stuff, but making sure that they, they feel your presence. Learners do better in online course when they know the facilitator is there and actively guiding them through it. So that's what this thing is all about. So um, you can go through the scenarios. Uh, the visual design you can see is really good. There's a short synopsis of the scenario. This is Margot. We're introduced to her earlier in this learning experience. That is the instructor. Um, one of the topics uh, in this course is about establishing teaching presence early on in the course by responding to everyone's uh, discussion post in an icebreaker forum. So the question is, this person has logged in a little bit late into the course. Should Margo bother responding? Should she do a personalized response or a canned response? So you can choose whichever option you think is best. And this is an example of um, very good corrective feedback, but this is a little bit more of an instructive experience rather than an inductive experience. It's really a little bit more of a multiple choice quiz in this particular scenario. So that's not the best option. We're kicked back to decide again, and you can fumble your way through until you get to the, the correct option and get the, the thumbs up there. Um, they are really well written little mini scenarios though. These are a really good example of a good knowledge check where you are given different situations kind of like in math where it's like you already learned how to solve a problem in a given format but you are given different variations of it with different numbers different little things going on so that you practice what you're learning and you practice applying what you've learned so again we're accelerating expertise a little bit but we're also checking knowledge here so same thing happens here this person's this professor's students are not meeting his expectations for discussion participation um, this is the, the student in question up here, one of them. Should he be indirect? These are his students kind of like looking at him from the other side of the computer screen. Anyway, so on and so forth. So there's three little scenarios here through each multiple choice. These are very small, more knowledge checks, but these are an example that, um, Teresa, you could use as an assessment potentially, just little mini scenarios where they're given a novel situation and they're asked to kind of figure it out based on what they learned from the rest of the tutorial. And there's a lot of tutorial that leads up to that point. Oh, I thought this is a really interesting one. I'll share this one. It's called Hannah Feels. Um, this was built using a software called Twine. Twine is an open source branching scenario software. People use it to build scenarios. They use it to build little games. Um, this one is a, is a scenario where you are someone that is volunteering at a helpline. This is you, this, this is Will. And you can see that's a little bit um, lo-fi in that there's just text on screen. Here's what you're saying. Here's what the person on the other end of the line is saying. And you have three options to respond. So this is very video game like. You can choose what you want to say. You can see what happens. This is a really good scenario that offers consequences um, for what happens uh, for, for your choices. There's not just like a sudden point where everything ends. Uh, there's different ways to kind of navigate through. So if you were to look at a flow chart of this, you would see that there's a lot of, you know, coming together and going apart um, as you go through this scenario. At the end, they hang up. You've only got the one choice. <laughs> and you and you move on. So then there's some more information as you go through. It's very video game like. Again, this is this is Twine. We'll talk a little more about Twine in just a minute. So that's a good example of um, if you're a helpline volunteer, that's more of a video game, but you would need practice probably before jumping on the phone line if you're manning a helpline to get practice with common responses, how to respond to people, how to keep them on the line, that kind of thing. Oh, I thought this one is really interesting. Let me pull this one up. So again, there's different ways to measure success in a scenario. As the designer, if you are um, building this out, you need to think about how you measure success in a scenario. Is it that they're making the correct answers or is it that they're making the correct answers within a certain time frame with the right budget or they're making a good enough uh, judgment with it in a time frame with the right budget? So this one is all about content moderating. And this is a, this is a game, a workplace horror game. Um, Twine is interesting. You have to look for little things that you can click on. Uh, you are a content moderator, probably in like, you know, like a sort of like call center kind of situation where you've already screamed, 
1200 cases today. So this is like, say like social media posts that you're reviewing for the, whether they should stay up or come down. Um, you've got your boss that's like angrily texting you in the corner here, telling you to get back to work, to go faster. You've got this timer in which you need to review this case. Um, as you click on the items here, more information shows up. Should you approve or block this post? Say you wanna block the post. There's actually not a lot of information if that's the, the, good, the good thing to do or the bad thing to do. You just have the stress here of the timer constantly moving onwards. You've got more and more cases. You have the boss that's like texting you in the corner. So again, it is, it is a horror game, but I would say it's probably a true to life horror game because I don't know if you've read anything about content moderating, but it sounds really hellish. So super fun game. If you don't do that for a living, if you do do that for a living, you probably would not want to play that game or scenario. Okay, so I think this one, I consider this one a menu driven scenario. This is by one of our own. Um, let me see, I don't think she's here. No, she's not here. Oh, she's here tonight. Carol's here tonight. Hi, Carol. <laughs> okay, so this is a really nice um, concussion training uh, learning tutorial. So the idea behind this one is that you are a sports coach and you have a really big job. Your job is not only to help your team go and win, win, win. Your job is to keep your players safe and to make sure you pull them from the game if they need to be pulled, if they have an injury, and to make sure that they get the medical treatment that they need if they have something that has gone wrong. So in this case, concussions. Concussions are a really big deal, and they can be a little bit tricky to diagnose, as I've learned from Carol's tutorial here. Okay, so let me um, scoot right along here. Yeah, this is really good. Um, Oh yeah, Coach Max, wait, where's the scenario? Okay, so in this module of the tutorial, and this is built using Captivate, by the way, she put a ton of work into this. In this module, you assess whether or not your players have a concussion and make a decision on what to do. You have two resources at hand. You have the concussion guide and you have a YouTube video or just a short video, I should say, that has all the signs and symptoms you need to look for. So you've got a nice little cheat sheet here with multiple tabs, signs, symptoms, and red flags. And you've also got a video here you could play at any point if you wanted to um, get more information. So here is your scenarios. You've got four scenarios. These are your players and each of them has suffered an injury and you need to make the call of whether or not they have a concussion. So this is a great use for a scenario because in real life, this is really high stakes. If one of your players has a concussion and you don't realize it and you put them back on the field and they don't get the treatment that they need, that's a, that's could be life-threatening. So this is a great way to, again, accelerate expertise by checking out each story and looking at the observable behavior and then choosing what you need to do. If you send her home, let her lay down, tell her to train, incorrect. So this is a, a good knowledge check as well, but it's a great way to um, pull up the resources that you might need. And again, in real life, you're probably gonna have some sort of cheat sheet with you that has concussion symptoms. There's a lot to remember, signs, symptoms, red flags. Maybe you're not sure if a student has a concussion or not. You can always refer to your cheat sheet and use that to help you decide. So um, that's a really good example of a scenario that's, that's, that is somewhat menu driven and that you have resources to help you uh, get through it. And um, I've got one more here that I won't show. I, I built this one in Storyline and APA citations. And the idea is with um, APA, you're never really gonna memorize what the format is. If you're doing APA format, you're gonna have resources at hand. So I have players or learners in here build out APA citations using resources they can keep on coming back to. But in any case, I see that I'm ro rolling low on um, time here. Oops, apparently I have the same slide twice. Okay, so just pause for a minute. What do you all think so far? Is this, is this okay? Do you all have a learning problem which scenarios would be a good fit? I've got um, a few more on designing scenarios. I'm realizing this could have been, um, you know, a <laughs> two hour presentation probably. Yeah, Erin, um, scenarios, yeah, it's good to have real life scenarios created through instructional design. It's, um, 
a good, it's good motivation too for learners if they are dealing with real life problems, if they are not just, you know, being handed information and then you do a knowledge check and then you maybe write an essay or do a final multiple choice quiz at the end. It's nice to be presented with a problem and, and try to figure it out. It's motivating. It's still a good learning experience as well. Okay. Oh, Devil and Peck is great. Oh, Maria, I'd love to hear um, more about that. Okay, so let's talk quickly about designing scenarios. There's a lot of wonderful resources out there. These um, bullet points are from Christy Tucker. If you haven't seen Christy Tucker's blog, it's fantastic. Again, it's in the handout as well. Um, if you're writing a branching scenario, consider what are the common mistakes people make? So this is something, this actually comes back to the, the SMEs. You would ask, what are the common mistakes that people make? Or do people get stuck? And what are the consequences? Because we're looking to make something that's really true to life. If it's a workplace situation, it's true to work. If it's a task, it's true to that task when people are, are grappling with this. Um, it's good once you've done all that thinking have some really solid measurable learning objectives. I think I reemphasize this a lot. You need to keep on track, especially when you're writing a scenario that is true to life and is gonna be a good learning experience. And you don't wanna go off like little tangents that are, are not relevant. You wanna keep it focused because building these is a lot of work and you gotta keep your, your head in the game and keep it aligned as you go along. So good learning objectives, choose a protagonist that's like your learner. If your um, learner is training to be a salesperson, your protagonist should be a salesperson. If your learner needs to make decisions from the point of view of a manager because they are a manager, the protagonist should be a manager, that kind of thing. It needs to be someone that's like your learner as far as the task or the thing that they're gonna do in real life. Again, write a story that's realistic. This is story-based. You need to write some realistic stories. You can often get stories from real life, from your SMEs, from the people that you're working with, things that have actually happened and then it's changed enough details that you can use it for uh, um, uh, e-learning. Uh, and um, also use casual language that's true to life. People don't talk formal in real life, so they're not going to talk formal in a scenario. You want to help make it more realistic. Okay, so that's what you should do first. Build a story, have good learning objectives, choose a good protagonist, make it true to life, start drafting some ideas, a short story. Um, and then when you start actually thinking about building it out, I suggest creating a flowchart first. I'll talk a little about flowcharts in the next slide. Um, write out the feedback or the consequences for each um, decision point. So each of these, these um, little squares here would be a, a point where someone has to make a decision. I need to figure out you know, where they're gonna go from each one of these, what that feedback looks like, what the consequences look like. So maybe for this decision right here, the stark blue, Fox, excuse me. Um, maybe there's two places they can go. Maybe one's better than the other. Maybe from there they can move back to where they were or go on to another decision. Any case, start thinking about how that's all going to work. Uh, Christy Tucker suggests drafting out your scenario in Twine before you build it out in Captivate or a storyline. I haven't actually built anything in Twine myself. Um, it's one of those things I've always like had like in my consciousness but never tried out. But she says it's a lot faster to build out in Twine. Again, it's open source software, so it's free. And some rapid prototyping I think is really appropriate to this process. We can build out something really fast and even see if it works before you spend your time building out in Storyline or Captivate. You build it out in Twine, that's your prototype. You can test it, you can send it to other people to test. You can figure out if it works or not, what the big problems are. And then and only then you should build it out in your e-learning software. Oh, Teresa, yes. This is a perfect example for using Adobe XD to prototype it. So that's a really nice, easy to use uh, prototyping software that's built for this kind of thing, absolutely. If you have access to XD, I still haven't used it, but <laughs> here is wonderful. And you can um, pick it up really quickly to build out prototypes. Um, so flow charts. So as you're building out your flow chart, obviously it can get really complex really quickly. You might build out multiple flow charts to keep it really clear, but I would just say it's really important to build out a flow chart before you dive into prototyping or um, building it out in Storyline or Captivate because it gets really complicated really fast and you need to save yourself time or you're gonna get really frustrated really fast. And I just wanna point out in the um, 
right hand flow chart here. This is a good example of where there's multiple endings. The green box that says end right here, that's the best ending. The orange boxes are okay endings. The red boxes are not so good endings. So it's a good example of a scenario that has multiple endings and some are better than others. And that's probably, again, that's probably really true to life. So keep that in mind. Okay. Avoid pitfalls of branching scenarios, just like if you're writing out multiple choice questions and you have multiple answers. Avoid making the right choice really obvious. Feedback or consequences should be instructive, not punitive. That comes back again to motivation. If you have a game over type of situation where you have to keep on going back to the beginning, that's really frustrating. It's going to be, it's going to kill your learner's motivation. This should be a positive learning experience as far as keeping them motivated and chugging along through the scenario. So I suggest considering allowing your learner to fix their mistakes rather than sending them back to the start. Um, don't be a control freak. Just like real life, there should be multiple pathways. Um, I had a, there's a, I don't have a time to show you the example, but um, if there's only one right answer for every, for every scenario decision, it gets kind of like frustrating and it also isn't true to life. Again, in real life, there's going to be multiple decisions. Usually none of them is going to be a game ender. Um, Keep it again, true to life. There should be multiple pathways. All right, so those, those are more branching scenarios. If you think about a menu-driven scenario, again, think about things that are true to life, what resources and tools your learner will have at hand. If they're assessing concussions, are they gonna have a cheat sheet? Probably. Um, if they're a car mechanic, think about what kinds of things they might have at hand for that. And also think about what, whether they confer easily to e-learning format. Scenarios are really fun, but this is an asynchronous format and not all situations can be built out true to life in your e-learning software. So just keep that in mind. Finally, again, build a flow chart, even a rough flow chart for a menu driven scenario. Build out a storyboard for this. If you're doing a menu driven scenario, it's important that you have really effective visual design because you only have so much screen space and it needs to be as uncluttered as possible and easy to identify all the elements that can be interacted with. Uh, gather your learner resources, have them ready to go to be implemented in your e-learning. It's gonna be a lot of formatting and again, probably some more graphic design than you'd have for a branching scenario. Just like the other branching scenario situation, build a prototype and test it with your SMEs. See if the tools and the resources they have at hand in the menu are appropriate. See if the scenarios are appropriate. Do a lot of testing. Okay. So wrap up here. Lucy, I, I, I will tell you, I tend to use PowerPoint for my flowcharts. If you Google flowchart software, there's a lot online that are free as well. I tend to default to PowerPoint because it's easy and I know it, but XD is great too. All right, wrap up. So an entire learning experience could be a scenario. You could also sprinkle in scenarios as hooks or as practice problems. Um, again, the idea is to kind of accelerate expertise, to be presenting your learner with problems they need to solve, but they need to be able to be likely to solve them successfully. So remember the motivation. Uh, be diligent in designing scenarios before building, just to make sure you're saving yourself time in the development process. Twine, you might consider Twine, you might consider Adobe XD for prototyping your um, scenario. Watch out for those pitfalls, keep it inductive rather instructive. Uh, keep in mind that there should be consequences and feedback, but it shouldn't be punitive. And definitely check out Christy Tucker's website. I've got her link in the handout. I'll post that one more time. She has tons of blog posts on scenarios and knows a ton about them. And I got other wonderful resources on the handout as well, including a podcast that's all about scenarios from Anna Sabremovich. Um, I've got her iconic scenario called Broken Coworker on the handout that I recommend you check out. And um, I've got some other resources in there as well. All right, so I barely squeaked by before eight o'clock. It turns out I probably put two hours of potential content into this presentation. Woohoo! Great. <laughs> Thank <That's> you. Awesome. <laughs> the PowerPoint is not in the link, but I can put it in the link. How about I just do that right now? Um, also, my email here is up on screen. I've got some unfamiliar uh, attendees to me here. So if you want to email me with any questions, please do. I put my email into the chat box as well. Oh, I saw a question in there. 
Okay. I'll go ahead and put a link to the PowerPoint in right now. I'll go ahead and stop that share. Um, if you've got someplace else to be, please go ahead and get there. I appreciate you all taking time to join me today. Um, if you have any questions going forward, most of you know where to find me and I'd be happy to chat with you. I'll go ahead and stop the recording now as well.